it's Guido coming at you with a, a quick review, I guess, of the Crocodile, which is a relatively new Tier 6 Heavy on the British side. And it's a, it's a copy-paste of the Churchill 7, guys, which is essentially a Tech Tree tank at Tier 6. This is a premium, and we got this from the Battle Pass before the one we are currently in. So I played it just a little bit. I thought we'd show you a little bit of gameplay in it. It is a bog-standard Churchill. So it is going to be, I think for a lot of people, more on the boring side of gameplay. At tier, it has some pretty good armor. It's quite thick at tier. You start talking about seeing eights and things like that, it's a bit of a pinata. Very interesting tank. I've been doing well in it for some reason. Probably a lot of luck. I'm sitting at a 71% win rate, but I don't think I have a whole lot of battles. Let's see, no I don't, 24. So that's gonna have a lot of luck involved in it right there. A lot of random randomness, but I am doing decently with a 1,136 experience. The armor and the hit points tend to keep this in games. And anytime you've got some armor and hit points, and you can also be effective with the tank and shooting other tanks, that tends to increase your experience and damage that you do. So 70.83 win rate, we're surviving 62.5%. That speaks to a high win rate. Hits at 77.88, which is good because this is a little pew pew gun doesn't have a really high alpha and you really need to do damage or you really need to do shots, do shots. You really need to take a lot of shots and penetrate, in which case then you can do some damage. But since it's such a low alpha, you have to have a lot of them. Armor use efficiency, that's what I'm talking about, 0.57. Now it's not up towards 1.0 where your mouses, uh, maybe your type fours and fives and some of these really super heavies are going to sit. When you start looking at about a 0.5 or so in the middle, on your armor use efficiency, you're talking about a situationally dependent armor. In this case, the situation is as long as the tearing is good and they're not too smart on weak spots, which this thing does have, then you're probably gonna have a decent day in bouncing. Check this destruction ratio, 4.22, that's crazy. So I have killed 38 for being destroyed only nine times. Again, low sample size, fellas, don't, let's not go crazy, it's only 24. But so far, so good. We're sitting at 1400, which is pretty good for a tier six heavy for me. Uh, I have tier 7s that probably aren't really quite that high, and only 310 on the assist. I have had a 2,512 damage game. I might show that one. I'm not sure if the one I'm showing, I might show two. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. We'll just, this is how we roll, fellas. We just go. So that is how I have done in it. How has everybody else done in it now that it's been around a little while? Well, not surprisingly, guys, on, I believe on NA. So this is the NA stats right here. Played more than the Churchill 7 because it just came out. It's also a premium, which is nice. Remember, premiums are gonna give you more credits, are gonna give you more experience, which is nice. So you're basically, you're playing a tier six tech tree that makes a bunch more. Plus you can use your crews from it, all that good stuff. But it sits about the same spot as the Churchill 7. In fact, slightly lower by 0.01% on overall win rate. Although the win rate of the people playing it is slightly higher. So 1.25 on win rate differential, it's down in the bottom third of tier six heavy tanks. Again, this is a plotting kind of game style. You're going to have to try to use the armor a little bit. Uh, you're not gonna get anywhere very fast. It doesn't reposition very well. It doesn't have any uh, depression on it. So the whole idea of hold down peek-a-boom is hard to do. It's a little bit ungainly with a mid, with a middle mounted, let's get this here, with a middle mounted turret with a really long front and back. It does have some kind of weird track situation here. There's no hitbox behind these. Remember the, the hole's a little bit further back, so you can bait people to shoot you here sometimes. Now they're probably going to track you, but they're not going to damage you. So there's some goofiness involved with the, with the way the model is. Not Well, that's not the right way to say it. Just the design of it can catch people off guard if they don't know exactly what they're doing in terms of shooting it. I think also the crocodile, does it mention here? I think the crocodile was supposed to be a flame, flame throwing version of this thing. Perfectly, I fought Brown out today. Uh, did I? Uh, what? What is all this? Oh, is this the the character's story or something? Okay. <laughs> Usually, there's a, a few historical facts, but this is just some diatribe about the character that was in. Uh, <laughs> okay, whatever. That's not helping us. I think the crocodile was supposed to be the flamethrowing version. Is that what this little nozzle is here? Anyway. I don't know. I should have looked it up, but I didn't. That's how I did. The way I have it set up, I've got uh, hardening. I'm using IA just to help the accuracy a little bit. 
Although the accuracy is not bad at 0.3 or 0.32 without the IA. And I got a turbo on it, guys. I put a turbo on it because it's so painfully slow. I figured I'd uh, just speed it up a little bit. There are multiple different ways you could set this up. You could certainly put a rammer on it. I sort of figure when you're talking about a reload time of 3.86, the, the loader's not going to do a whole bunch for you. Let's see what it does when we get rid of this. We'll get down to... No, I can't even look at it. Anyway, it's not going to shave much off the loading. Clearly, it'll shave a little bit. You'll get a little more DPM out of it. But I don't know. I don't see a rammer being highly effective on it. But you could use it. You could use vents. That could be a good one to use on there. Obviously, modified configuration if you're going to do the uh, the tanking thing in terms of you know getting out in front and taking hits and all that good stuff. So there's a couple options there, but that's the way I set it up. I did carry four D APCR, so quite a bit. 208 penetration on your gold round slash special round, 148 on your standard AP. The HE doesn't do a whole bunch. It goes to 190. It's only got 38 pen. I do have 10 just because I have so many shells. Although, it shoots so fast, depending on the situation, you can go through a lot of shells with this thing. I don't know if I've ever come close to running out, but I have got low or used all my AP and started using, or sorry, APCR and started using AP. Generally, I just hit two and go with this tank. There are some negatives to APCR along with the range and the pen going down at range, all that good stuff. So I don't know, 148 on the penetration is not fantastic and 208 is pretty darn good. That's a pretty big bump for an APCR round, to be honest. Usually the heat rounds are the ones that have that big of a bump. All right, fellas, well, there you go. That's the crocodile. Just a couple little uh, facts about that bad boy. I did have a pretty good crew. I believe this is my, yep, Black Prince crew. So got a Black Prince crew, didn't know that. Remember, it's a premium. So your Black Prince or other tiers that have that many guys and guess we should talk about that. We've got a commander, gunner, driver, radio operator, loader. We have one of each. One of each. Now, you know, tier six and the crocodile is probably not the tank that everyone's looking to create a, a super crew for, but the good news here is with the new crew system, that's pretty good because now you can get all the good skills or most of the good skills for each one of those kinds of guys, i.e. there's not a... a radio operator that's also a commander on this tank. You would have to have five people in a tank like this right here to get the maximum capability out of the skill system right now and this one has it. So the unfortunate part about it is it's it's a crocodile. <laughs> it's a tier six. It's not not fantastic. But I enjoy it. I do. Let's go take a look at some gameplay. Alright so I'm gonna show you this top tier battle because as I stated earlier at tier and against lower tiers, that's where the armor on this thing really does shine. And you can kind of be a little mobile bunker. Don't really try some of this style of gameplay if you're looking at sevens and eights starting to pound on you. The, the way I handled sevens and eights, I just like I do with all bottom tier stuff, and especially with a tank like this, go support an area, get far enough up forward to where you can be effective. In fact, I might just show you a game like that after this, if I didn't already make a video on it, but I don't think I did. And I'll show you a bottom tier where I did where I did actually pretty decently in this tank. But when you're talking about a game like this, we got tier sixes, fives, and fours. I mean, this is this is as good as it gets for tier six. If you've got fours to beat up on in your tier six, you're you're probably set up for a good day. Look how slow it is, right? I have a lot of talking to do, a lot of babbling before this thing gets anywhere near. Now the good news is I am doing 28 or 29. That's the turbo speaking, fellas. If I don't have the turbo, I've I've Probably not even completed my first initial turn to the left by now. <laughs> it's not that bad, but it ain't far off. It is not far off. All right, Mr. Chaffee, he becomes a bit of a thorn in my side. I missed that shot. It's actually a pretty accurate gun. Remember, it was a 140 Alpha, so you're not going to slap people for uh, a lot of Alpha, a lot of damage. Sometimes, we actually had this discussion on Coffee Talk, I believe. Sometimes when you're tank like this and say you're bottom tier, you get into position and start shooting higher tier stuff, they, they'll often ignore you for a little bit because you're only doing 140 and that can sometimes be a nice little advantage. I was trying to push up here and get in there with the Cromwell while I was still alive. I don't really want to be there when five tanks are shooting me and flanking me. That's a great way to lose right there. That's a lot of tanks. If I push up to that corner, they come up and over and around and now I'm getting shot from every direction. So I'm going to very slowly, sadly very slowly, Try to pull out of this thing. We'll just shoot them as we back out of here. There's a little bit of issues here with the, the way the design is. As I said earlier, the front of your tank comes around way earlier. Even the hitbox portion will come around the corner before your turret does with the center mounted. 
So sometimes you're going to have trouble kind of getting in position. We get a ricochet there. That's unusual. Unusual? No, not unusual. Unfortunate. Little snap. That works. Just put the gun online and shoot. Pickle that off. That one missed. Not not too bad. All right. So now we've got four of them. I'm still not in a position to push. I'm also watching six o'clock because I really feel like that chaffy is going to be emboldened. It's just me, a BT-7, and a chaffy right now. I really don't know what lit me there, to be honest. Probably, actually, what happened is somebody came around the corner up ahead there, and the front end of my tank was sticking out. Again, another issue with a tank like this with center-mounted turrets. A piece of the tank can easily stick out. A lot of people will find that often with the front-mounted turrets, they stick their rear end around and they don't see what it was that saw them because their spotting point was not there. These guys make a big mistake. They just sort of stand in and eat a bunch of shots. So I'll just take that. That's fine. We're already up to 245. Bounce. That one bounces off of him. Shooting mantlets, not too good. All right, look at that. Bounced again, 355. He shoots HE, I guess. Did I just get... I did get hit by HE. <laughs> nice. Missed that shot, unfortunate. And now I'm starting to do the calculus in my brain, man. All right, math in public. There's no calculus. But what I am thinking about is when can I push these guys? I think it's a little early. There's still four of them there. Let me let me kill a couple more and maybe we can push up there. Look at this. We've only taken, what, five hit points of HE. You can always tell when somebody gets frustrated against you when you're driving these little mobile bunkers like this. They'll start shooting HE from little guns, just hoping to get something out of you. This guy just stands in. I don't really know what his plan is. He must not really have a good idea of what the reload is on the crocodile, the Churchill 7. It's a heavy, so it can surprise people that you're shooting every three to four seconds. Take advantage of it, man. If a guy's going to stand in and you're getting reload times on him like that, he's, they've also proven that none of them are really shooting any gold, something you will find at the mid to low tiers. The new players, you're kind of, uh, how shall we say it, uh, seal clubbing a lot of times down here. Chaffee does some nice work. I find this guy, I'm gonna go for a track. This is a tracking machine for a heavy. Heavies are generally not really known for their tracking ability, but this thing is a tracking machine. We're gonna grab up a little bit of assist in there. Oh no, we don't. Do we not get any assist out of that? That is a bummer. Query, should you get your own assist? I've, I've often wondered about that. If I track a guy, should I not also get my own assist? <laughs> That's not how it works, but it would be cool. Hmm. Coffee's nice. We're at 1,500 damage. All right, it's slow. We see this a lot. People make decisions, repositioning decisions with tanks based on their speed sometimes. I think really if you make the decision early and get going, it doesn't matter really how fast you are. Just keep Wing towards the hit points. This is a fairly easy decision because as you can see, all the hit points are down here. I get lit, so there must be somebody up on the hill. I kind of expected that. The M8A1. Tog and all his hit points are down there. I really want to get to him. So we'll go in there. We'll stand in with the Tog. We have 1,200 hit points. He has 1,560 minus 95. Simavente is caught out in the open. He's making a runner. We'll try to put one on him. Nice. A1 hit point, M8A1. Oh, that's a bummer. Did we get one assist? We did. <laughs> Elevation is not great. Depression's bad, elevation isn't great, so as my hole was headed downhill, I could not elevate the gun enough. I really want to get to the TOG, because he's losing hit points, and I want some of that, some of those delicious hit points. I don't want to just give this guy shot after shot, but I'm sort of blowing him off. I don't know why the rest of my team did not come in there and kill him any faster, because he actually becomes a factor. They just hit me in the back. That sucked. There we go. All right, so he gets a couple hits on me. Not very maneuverable. I'm like, oh, geez, here he comes. Do I have to deal with this guy first? Probably. I'm going the wrong way. My turret is going the long way around. That was not good. As you notice, my hole was turning one way and the turret the other, and that's uh, that's not good. The tog is invisible until he fires. <laughs> Impressive that the tog... I just stand in. Let's see. I was more curious than anything I think he basically is shooting the same gun right I think it is the two pounder or whatever it is we're gonna see if we can get this guy dead there we go and the final kill 2512 damage 636 assist and three kills the tog sitting there did not help his team uh, it was a good game I did a lot of damage it was 
very low tier. The moving pillbox, we ended up bouncing 755, and the enemy team really didn't do a great job. Honestly, they should have wiped us out up top. You were probably thinking that as you were watching it. Why are they letting us all just sit there? The good news, though, is if they had pushed me. So let's say they pushed the crocodile, little moving pillbox. Yes, they might be able to get around to the side and the back and start no kidding doing damage, but I have pretty dang good hit points. I also have a great rate of fire. So I should be able to do a lot of damage. And if they are all jumping on me, then my buddies should get some shots as well. So I'm not 100% sure how that would go down. I, I'm pretty sure if they'd have got aggressive early, they'd have taken us out. But they wanted to play peekaboom against a crocodile. And if someone's going to play like that against this tank at that tier, let them. All right, let's check out another example. This will be the bottom tier example. All right, here on Westfield, kind of a worst case map for this tank, number one. Uh, also not the worst case bottom tier. Notice there's only two eights that I'm dealing with. On the enemy team, it's a Progetto and a Scorpion. There is an Artie, which is also a problem, but there's only one. So we got a kind of a mixed bag here of good and bad. Bad map for this tank, bad tiering, not as bad tiering as it could be. It does have Artie, but it's only one. All right, so when I logged into this or spawned into this, I'm like, okay, shoot. This is not the greatest uh, situation for the crocodile, but I feel like the heavy needs to get up here and at least try to support against whatever they have. And as I'm looking at it, they also only have three sevens. So I, I sort of figured the eight would be here, so that's gonna be a problem. I'm gonna try to ignore him. I don't wanna to, want to play peekaboom with him. But if I, if I look at the rest of the tanks, the number of TDs they have, I sort of figure that if we can handle the Progetto and maybe a couple of their heavies up here, we'll be all right. I thought the Progetto might be coming for me here. Yep, he makes. I think he saw me. He was making a move, and I sneak a shot with the with the APCR into him. He had to hate that. Catch this guy out, and we're just going to keep shooting as much as we can, guys. That's the that's all we've got. Oh, let me bounce that. That's a bummer. Try to just keep the turret. Turret's pretty strong. I don't want to give him any more of the front. And notice I am angled right there. I don't want to give him any more of that flat front than I have to. Right, so. Unfortunately, it is sticking out a lot, right? Remember, even though I'm angled, the front of that tank's coming out a lot, but notice I've got a decent angle on him, so that will increase the relative thickness. It gets a shot on me there, so 269 goes through, and we end that dude. Now, because I didn't take a bunch more shots, I didn't think there was anything super close. Good news is somebody likes the JP and saves me from myself, because I think I might have driven out into the open right there and probably got ganked, and now we're just finding TDs that are uh, foolishly sitting in the bushes lit. I don't know what this guy's doing. I think he's shooting people, but I have no idea if he knows he's being hit. Now he's tracked now. He's moving his turret or moving his gun around thinking, how do I get out of this? You don't because you're perma-tracked by a crocodile slash Churchill 7. One more into the same spot. Takes him out. We'll put another shot into here. Don't know. Looks like it may have hit. This one's going to hit the ground, as I recall. Yeah, some... Oh, no, I don't know. Could have hit. He might have moved. Then we'll make a push. Oh, there's that dude. I do not want to give that guy any more shots than I have to. So it's going to take a while, but in the local area, at least, this thing can reposition. It'll it'll take a bit. you got to be patient and at the same time be moving. I didn't remember if I got that shot, so we put another one in him. He's not happy. Let's just back out. No sense giving him any more hit points than he needs. We'll come down this way. This is the best way to work this. Artie took a stab at me. Thank goodness that hit way, way short. So I don't know if he just shot early, didn't wait for the full zoom, or got about as unlucky as you can get. I was on a back slope there, so that does complicate things for him. We've got a 94 hit point Progetto. It's not absolutely one. We're in good shape. The Cheeto just yellows in. I don't know why he's doing this, but he does. Honestly, fellas, what's the expectation for him? Just discuss that for a minute. Look look at your mini-map. There's a Panzer 4S down at the bottom of the hill there. We know that's a position. He's backing off the edge of it. And I, he's probably one of them that hit him. The guy did 100-something. There's a Pollack in town. More than likely has shots on the guy. And he's running into a JP and a Scorpion G. And then there's a Progetto right there. I don't know, man. On the list of choices to make, that's pretty low on my list. He's out in the open now. Oh, that was lucky, fellas. 
That was really lucky, but I'll take it. I'll take it. We've got 1,516. And like I said earlier, I just went into this bottom tier. Like, let's go to where heavies go. Let's support whatever's up there as best we can. We'll take whatever kind of opportunities we can. Looked like we could move around there. That was fine. And I don't think I'm able to push because the Panzer IV is going to see me. The Pollack might see me, and there's a Scorpion somewhere. Kind of like what the Hellcat is putting down right here, so I'm going to come over and pick some of it up. Maybe not the best approach to the bush, but nobody saw me. That'll work. I'm like, oh, yeah, give me this hit point. Oh, no. A little, uh, little jerk on the hand, so to speak, and I miss. Here comes Cliffy. Cliffy was in this game. He's in his 2801. 105, derp. This is, that is another Tier 6 Premium, I believe. Tier 6, I think it is. Which is a copy pasta of a Tech Tree tank, just like the Crocodile is right here. All right, we find the find the Scorpion. I'm like, oh, here's the Depression working against me. i got to come up and over, and now he's down below, and I got nothing. I got nothing, and I got lit. And I'm taking shots. Super glad the Scorpion was no longer there. He's down at the bottom as well. This game is not one. I'm, now I'm just thinking really hard. You can see the steam coming out of my cranium. Honestly, I don't know if I've ever seen Artie miss me this much, but I'll take it. So the Hummel misses another shot. It's a different situation, guys. It's a new day. There's nobody in the town. See how the 100M1 has cleared out the town? The 103 is down at the bottom. I know the Scorpion has fallen back. I don't know where the 2801 is. I am taking a chance, but at this point it's a more calculated risk than the other guy took. I see the Scorpion G doing his thing. Oh, this is going to be fun. Let's hit him. No, let's miss him. It's all right. We'll reload. We'll get a shot here. No idea. There's the Panzer IV S. We put a shot on him. Very nice. Here comes the 2801. They're all on the run now. Didn't get a shot on him. I'm just coming at this guy now. I, I don't really want to sit there much more, and I know the Scorpion's looking to get in position. So we'll just try to close out the light tank. That was my reckoning there, which works out. The Scorpion got the 100 M1, so he's on a reload, so I can push forward. I know there's a little dip here, so I can use this to sort of hide for a moment. There's the Scorpion, no longer a factor. Let's push up and over and kill the Panzer IV-S. There he is. Let's get the kill on him. This will be awesome. Where's my gun depression? Nowhere to be found. Artie gets him. I get hit by there, Artie. Bummer. I don't think I get any more damage. 2,079 damage, 240 bounce, 559 assist. This is bottom tier, guys. And not a particularly great tank. right? It's not the best tank of all time. I like how fast it shoots. It gives you options when you have a tank that shoots that fast. As a supporting tank, and that's... <clears throat> I harp on that a lot. We talk about it a lot. We, we get this... It's a support tank thing. Wargaming puts it in their literature. They say, all right, this tank has this, that, and the other. It's a, it, you know, use it in a supporting role. Supporting role it is not by default sitting way in the back. It may not even be in the back. I support it up front. Right? I wasn't going to go take on the Progetto 54 directly, but I would work around him, and I would look to take shots on guys in the back. I would put position this goofy, slow little pillbox tank with its 140 Alpha in the best place I could put it to shoot things that are up front without taking top-tier risks and things like that. Helps, obviously, the enemy team did not play particularly well. The Progetto got killed without doing a whole bunch. He didn't have a whole lot of support. He had TDs, but... Not much else, and once they got lit by our, our more aggressive guys up in the northwest, it was pretty much over, and we just started cleaning them up. That's how the ball bounces in a world of tanks. The question is not whether that happens to you or for you. The question is what you do with it. Even you guys and even me and even anybody can take a silly crocodile and have a decent game. Does that mean I'm going to have every game like this? Hell no. But uh, if you position correctly, you will increase your chances. I'll give you that much. Let's go close this out with the Crocodile Review. Well, all right, I looked it up. The Churchill Crocodile was, in fact, a flamethrowing tank. It was one of Major General Percy Hobart's, Hobart's funnies, which are various tanks with uh, different things, different capabilities other than just being a tank. 
This one obviously had a flamethrower, produced in 1943. Let's see, service-wise, had an effective short-range flamethrower used by units of the 79th Armored Division in concert with the Churchill AVRE and other funnies. It was an effective assault weapon used so successfully against bunkers that many surrender after the first ranging shots, or many surrendered. You know, I think about this, if you're, if you're an infantry guy and the psychology of it, if you see a bunch of other guys with guns and you got your buddies around, I think the natural human uh, assumption of survival, although I think the longer you're in a war, you probably have less of that, but you at least look at that and go, well, you know, if I effectively fight these guys, then you know maybe I live or maybe we lose, but I don't die. But I think when you see something like this coming in, it starts shooting a wall of flame at you. That's a different, that is absolutely a different psychological idea because you can very well conceptualize the danger of that vice in essentially invisible bullets, although you can hear them and you fully understand what's going on. But a flamethrower, that's another thing. In this game, though, there are no flamethrowers, at least not in our version. I believe they tested them over in the RU version of World of Tanks, but we do not have it. In this game, it is a Tier 6 Tech Tree Copy Pasta Premium Tank that is exceedingly average, but actually pretty good if it's played within its limitations. That's about the best that can be said for it. I don't think anyone's going to run out and say, my gosh, I just have to have the, uh, the British Crocodile because it's so much fun to play. It can be fun to play in certain situations. It can be extremely painful. I showed you two good games. They weren't all like that. <laughs> Sometimes it just blows up. That's all I've got. You guys have a great one. See ya. Let me know what you think about it because I know a lot of you got it. It was on Battle Pass. I actually like that version of Battle Pass. I also like premiums that aren't all tier 10s and 8s. There you go. Let me know. See ya.